Hey cats, it's Ed Midsoul Bud here. Thanks for joining me once again on the channel, this time for an episode of Running Shoe, yay or nay. Four shoes today, I'm gonna let you know whether I'm gonna pick them up for review on the channel. It could be that I think some of these might be better reviewed by some other shoe tuber out there. They can do them more justice than old Ed Bud. Loads to get through today, so let's get to it. Thanks for joining me on the channel guys, it is always appreciated. Remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications if you've yet to do so. I think it's quite a lot of you out there that are watching that aren't subscribed, so it really does help the channel out. Also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. If you've got a particular question on any of the videos I've put out recently, hit me up with a super thanks down below. It does help the channel out on a more ad hoc basis. Let's get to the yay or nay for today. Shoe number one. So 2020 is rolling to a close and there's quite a few shoes that keep coming up that viewers want me to review. So there's a couple today I'm gonna revisit and let you know my thoughts, whether I should pick them up. You viewers are the lifeblood of my channel, so I do appreciate you tuning in. You make the channel what it is. First up today is the Socony Endorphin Shift 3. Now for ages, I've heard that this model is quite the easy day recovery shoe, perhaps even a long run shoe for some people, and quite a few of you out there by the sounds of it get on really well with the previous models. It does appear in this third iteration from Socony that they've drastically reduced the weight and improved all elements of the shoe, making it a more tempting offering to try out for the channel. There's obviously quite a large stack height here in the heel of the shoe, but I can imagine this is actually cupping up around the heel somewhat, so it's probably not quite as high as it appears in the pictures. I think the overall intention really for the shift is that it can handle the lower gear kind of running, those easier paced efforts. See what I did there. On closer inspection of the images we have of the shoe, the upper looks closer to what we saw on the original Endorphin Speed from 2020. That was a superb mesh, really conforming to the foot, so that's a really big improvement. I've enjoyed pretty much all the other Speed Roll series shoes from Socony over the last few years, but the shift's one I've not tried out. I certainly didn't try out the one the two didn't seem all that appealing but the three i think there's something else there that could actually work for me really enjoying the prime x strung but i'm looking for something else that i can use for those very easy days lighter by an ounce from the version two that could make it that little bit more versatile absolutely one i'm going to test out for the channel so many requests for me to review the shift so it's a yay for the Socony endorphin shift three Shoe 2. Next up is the Adidas 4D Forward 2. This is another shoe that people keep asking me to review. After watching a science site documentary on the production of these shoes, I'm a little bit more intrigued by the model perhaps than I was before. The whole structure of the midsole there is designed to do a very specific thing. It's kind of a spring really, but the whole factor I missed out on before was that it kind of compresses but will only go forwards and sort of return to shape in a certain direction. It's kind of like a spring that's designed to collapse and then return kind of some of the energy that you've put into it, I suppose. As an IT and computing lecturer interested in all sorts of digital things, that's actually ignited a bit of a spark in my mind about the shoe. I guess I'm like a cat with an inquisitive mind. I've yet to try out one of the 3D printed midsole shoes as well, so I do want to see what the feeling's like. I guess I'm a bit like a wine connoisseur or something, but with foam. I think my only reservation about this model is the weight, 340 grams for the sample size. It could be anvil-like for my size, UK 11 or US 12. And the price of 180 Earth credits is a little bit of a turn off, I've got to admit. Hopefully I can pick these up on a discount at some point, maybe in the future. I've enjoyed Prime Knit Plus in the upper of other Adidas shoes over the last couple of years. And the mystery surrounding the EPU 44 midsole it's just almost too much for me to not investigate. Formulas, foams, the hunt for the perfect midsole. I think the chase is more satisfying though than the final act almost always. Think about films, you know, they're all built around the build-up, aren't they? And then the final act sometimes can be a little bit underwhelming. When you get those sort of plot releases towards the end of film, sometimes they nose dive pretty quickly but still we search and dream, don't we, for the perfect midsole. And thus the 4D Forward 2 is a 
intriguing offering perhaps maybe this type of midsole will take over from the adidas boost midsole seems to be around for ages now this type of compression could be the perfect replacement for boost remember there's a shoe for every runner out there not everything's going to work for everybody you just got to try and find the ones that are going to be perfect for your running so it's kind of like a horse tail somewhere in the middle at the moment for the adidas 40 forward 2 i think i got the name right there shoe three electric red and cobalt what a great looking shoe the fuel cell sc elite version 3 is rc elite 3 v sc I, I i don't know i'm confused this is the new york marathon edition here just released probably ready for racing out of the box literally if you've been sent a pair if the other fuel cell shoes from the last few years are anything to go by i've had a bucket load of requests to review the sc elite version 3 but at 220 notes it's a heavy price to pay it's certainly been an expensive shoe year so i'm going to go through this one component by component and decide whether i'm going to pick it up the mesh upper seems like a return to the original rc elite which was a real favourite of mine. We have the eyelet loops here that look something like off the original Rebel. That wasn't the greatest upper of all time for me. But on closer inspection, the refined upper here in the V3 actually looks quite like the V2. They've just changed up the material. It's not quite as sparkly this time though. The major changes seem to be underfoot with a huge slab of the midsole cut out perhaps to help amplify that highly cushioned feel that we got in the last version of the shoe. I quite liked the midsole in the V2. It didn't feel like the most propulsive though. It was good at kind of absorbing some of the impact, but it didn't really feel like a shoe that I wanted to run ridiculously fast in. It's not like a Vaporfly or the Adios Pro 2 or something which just makes you want to go crazy my one major bugbear though of the version 2 was the fact that the outsole just wasn't that great in terms of traction we were lacking that dynaride application on the outsole that we had in the v1 rc elite sadly it's not back here in the v3 and we're just hitting winter time when we really need it i think i said 220 early i think it's 210 earth credits here in the uk it's a big price for what appears to be a very similar midsole to what we got in the v2 even less outsole rubber as well this time around than we had in the v2 in fact the outsoles reminded me quite a bit of the sc pacer and that was pretty poor in terms of outsole grip so for the time being it's actually going to be a nay on the sc elite version 3 till i can get a reasonably good discount on it i'm just not prepared to splurge that much cash on a shoe that in some way has a number of issues that i had in the sc pacer there's just too many iterations of the super shoes just now to justify buying all of them they're very subtle small changes this time round in 2022 at least with Socony, puma maybe asics as well well, they've actually made some quite considerable changes to their shoes and improved them some intelligent changes to the lineup rather than just chucking more foam at it i think that makes them a little bit more worthwhile in terms of pickup on to shoe four last but by no means least it's the puma deviate nitro 2 i've now lost count on the number of viewers that have requested that i review this shoe it does seem to be a really popular model it appears this latest iteration of the carbon or power plate equipped shoe is a touch heavier in a uk size 8 than the velocity nitro that's a fact i find quite hard to believe but that's what it says on the puma website an eight mil drop from heel to toe as per most super shoes these days uh, i think that's down to more stack in the forefoot to accommodate that plate placement though lower down on the puma web page or at least the page for the shoe it does state it's a six mil drop so Pick the whichever one is best for you. A more conservative 36mm heel stack here and a mixture of Nitro Elite foam underfoot in the front section of the shoe perhaps is making this slightly lighter than the original version of the Deviate Nitro along with standard Nitro foam in the heel for a little stability. There's certainly a daily super shoe vibe about the Deviate Nitro 2. Perhaps a shoe that Puma have put out to actually match up and compete against the Endorphin Speed 3. I can see why so many viewers are keen for me to test this one out and see whether I like it or not at 140 Earth credits. That's a more easy to stomach price. And it's got all the hallmarks of the Puma running shoe lineup that I've really enjoyed over the past couple of years. So to please those viewers who have requested it, and also probably myself and my feet, it's a yay for the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. So that's all the shoes today in the yay or nay. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude time. 
I've really been enjoying the album Space Werewolves Will Be the End of Us All by Blockhead. This was released in 2021 and features the typical sort of patchwork of samples and textures and sounds that you get on a Blockhead album. We're talking hip hop beats, quite mellow, quite calm. Every cult documentary is the same, has that atypical Blockhead style. Really interesting use of percussion on that track. Fantastic beats on the track, Nostalgia is a Scam. Really nicely programmed and real nice little progressions and fills in there, making it sound kind of like a real drummer when it really isn't. Really cool melodies on werewolves love astrology. Some cool little synth or piano type parts that repeat. There's lots of repeated things here but they never seem to get boring. Go and check it out guys. Space Werewolves will be the end of us all by Blockhead. In fact it's ideal Halloween type stuff. Thanks for watching through to the end of today's video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I fire out the new videos for you. Give this video a thumbs up like it really helps out and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.